Hello everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. This video I'm going to talk about Avalanche and its token AFAX. So if you guys like the content, subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, follow us on Twitter for regular updates about our risk indicators, and more. So there are two reasons that I wanted to talk about AVAX today. One, very simply, is that AVAX has been one of the best performers in the top 50 and beyond over the past week. It's been a pretty bullish time in the market as a whole, and yet Avalanche has been one of the best performers over that period of time. And so that makes it a good time to check in on risk and trend to see where our indicators think that Avalanche might be headed next. That's reason number one. Reason number two is that just yesterday, um, Robinhood announced that it would be making AVAX available uh, through its brokerage, and you can now buy and sell AVAX on Robinhood. That might not be that exciting to you if you already are set up on Coinbase or Binance or you already have your access points, um, but it's still significant because it makes AVAX available to a whole new crop of people who rely on Robinhood as their brokerage um, and increases exposure for AVAX and potentially the market for AVAX as well. So it's a bullish development to be sure. So that's another reason why now is a good time to take a look at what's going on with AVAX uh, on the, the risk and the trend indicators. So what I have up here to take a look at first is the upside downside potential indicator or UDPI for AVAX on the long term. This is our in-house risk indicator. And um, as the long term implies, we have medium and short term versions of this as well, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But um, starting with the long term makes sense because this is the most macro perspective that we can get. Each one of these dots is a daily close on the price of AVAX, and they're color coded by risk. So up here at market cycle tops, when risk gets really elevated, we see these red dots flashing. That indicates that the model considers most of the realistic upside potential to have been realized already and much downside potential to be realistic at that point. And the opposite, of course, is true when we're seeing um, these deep green readings near these bottoms, and we've spent some time there just recently. Um, green indicates that much of the realistic downside potential has been realized and that there's quite a bit of upside potential that the model considers to be realistic at that point. Historically, the UDPI has done quite a good job calling elevated and low risk periods of time, you know, market cycle tops and market cycle bottoms. And so this is a useful thing to kind of get our bearings on a macro standpoint. What we can see is that over the past couple of weeks, as the price has recovered to the upside a bit, you know, risk has followed. And yet we're still seeing green, not quite as deep as it was a little bit earlier in the summer, but we're still seeing green, which suggests that from a macro standpoint, we're still in an accumulation zone. This is still a relatively oversold level for AVAX. We can see this especially clearly if we pull up the raw readings of the UDPI. Again, this is the long-term UDPI, and the yellow line here is the price, and the white line here is the UDPI on a long-term basis. And after consolidating on the UDPI and on the price, but on the UDPI in the minus four to minus five range for a bit, it's now recovered to the upside and has just crossed this minus two threshold on its way back to this kind of uh, equilibrium. We'll see if um, you know, if we continue back to the upside on price and risk, which of course is a function not only of AVAX and sentiment around AVAX, but also broader market conditions. I think one of the things that's been going on here that's been allowing the crypto market to rally recently is that a lot of investors are expecting that inflation has peaked and that the worst might be over. We don't know if that's true, of course, but uh, it's it's a reasonable hypothesis, and a lot of people are buying into it right now, and that's uh, giving people the confidence to start uh, increasing their exposure again. There is going to be another uh, announcement on Wednesday, so in just a couple of days, about inflation. We'll find out about the July inflation numbers, and I think that if those are worse than expected, that could cause a sell-off in the markets. Um, but if they come in as expected, let alone if they're more optimistic than expected, then uh, that, that should uh, refuel the market here and allow it to continue rebounding to the upside. I think that there's a lot of mean reversion that could happen here after such a brutal sell-off over the past couple of months. If we just think about you know, crypto assets in isolation, 
the path of least resistance remains to the upside. Just because you know we're, we're so deeply oversold that there's uh, plenty of potential for recovery, but the broader markets have to allow that to happen. And so Wednesday will be a critical day for seeing how that inflation, uh, how those inflation numbers come in. So that's what the UDPI looks like on the long term for AVAX. We can also look at the medium term, and we can see that this is a little bit of a quicker model. It's a little bit more reactive. So back to the long term, then to the medium term, we can see that, for example, up here at these elevated levels, the risk starts to come down a little bit more quickly than on the long term. And also here on these lower levels, we see that uh, the risk gets a little bit more elevated more quickly. So on the long term, we're still uh, you know, just above that minus two level, but on the medium term, we're actually a bit closer to that zero midpoint where from a purely risk standpoint, upside and downside potential are approximately um, equalized. Uh, that's even more the case on the short term where we reach these kind of equilibrium levels a little bit quicker. So again, if we look at these in sequence, we can see how the risk on the shorter term timeframes gets a little bit quicker. So what this indicates is that, you know, there's potential right now that uh, we could be in for some consolidation from a risk standpoint. Um, but, you know, if, if the trend continues to the upside, then there's also still plenty of upside potential remaining. Um, and so let's take a look at the trend because what the upside, poten uh, what the upside downside potential indicator or any risk indicator um, tells you is assuming that the market takes a direction, how far can it go? It doesn't really tell you which direction to expect it to go. And so we like to complement our risk indicators with direction and trend indicators that can give us a read on which direction to be biased in. This is the market direction classifier, which is designed to do exactly that. So this yellow line here is the critical level that the market direction classifier is watching. And when the price is above the market direction classifier's critical level, it turns green. And that indicates that uh, a bullish direction is most likely to continue. Whereas obviously when it flashes red, the opposite is true. Um, this is uh, you know, a potential uh, trading strategy uh, just sitting here waiting for you. Not financial advice, but uh, it's useful um, because it gives you very quick um, readings of direction that allow you to get in and out in a kind of flexible and nimble way. So if you had traded this, um, you know, buying in when the market direction classifier is green and selling when it's red, you would generally perform quite well. Um, you know, when there are losses coming, it gives you an opportunity to get out before much of those losses are realized. Even back here, you know, early in 2021, when uh, there was a massive sell-off and we saw that, you know, you didn't have an opportunity to get out until uh, some losses had been realized, we still saw this daily close the flip uh, into a red MDC and, and much more downside followed. So although you might have incurred a, a little bit of short-term losses there, the getting out at, at this point still would have protected you from a lot of remaining downside. And obviously getting back in um, allowed you, would have allowed you to, to participate in this bull market. So this is the same idea here. You know, the, the MDC is green. It's above this critical level, which is just at about $21 right now. It's well above this. Um, and it's showing uh, bullish signs. So right now is, is uh, from a trend standpoint, clearly uh, a time when more upside potentials is realistic um, for AVAX. It could continue in that direction and there's plenty of room um, to run if it does. Again, we'll, we'll be watching the broader market to see if that will be allowed to happen. But from an, a purely AVAX standpoint, um, there is reason for optimism right here. We can also look at the trend confidence indicator, which um, can be used alongside the MDC. The TCI is meant to try to front run moves. It tries to call changes in direction more quickly than the MDC does. And so for example, if we look back again at the summer of 2021, we can see that the TCI um, flipped green really at the bottom here. It called this trend reversal um, before the trend was evident in the price. And so it gave you an opportunity to get in and catch really this entire move to the upside. Um, 
the MDC was a little bit more patient and the MDC flipped green a, a, little, bit later, a, a little bit later, still plenty early in this macro move, but a little bit later. Um, and so the trend confidence indicator would have given you that, uh, that kind of leading indicator um, that you could begin to increase your exposure. And then the MDC would have kind of confirmed that uh, a little bit later. So, you know, just looking at uh, the MDC chart again, the TCI really flipped green right here when we saw this kind of V-shape reversal back in the summer of 2021. Um, whereas, so the TCI flipped here and the MDC flipped uh, a little bit later. So these are all um, giving you a little bit different information. We like to use them uh, to complement one another. And that's the state of things with AVAX. Clearly an accumulation zone from a long-term standpoint, um, plenty of remaining upside potential. And yet this, this move recently, um, has been fairly impressive. And so now uh, on a short-term basis, it makes sense to kind of wait and see what the, uh, what the CPI numbers are like on Wednesday, what the inflation numbers were like for July, and we'll take things from there. So hope you guys found this useful. Thanks for watching.